Hello everyone. In the last video, we tried to use a 1D convolutional neural network for the for the fault diagnosis of bearing for bearing data using raw vibration data. But in but uh, as mentioned in the last video, we saw that there is a huge impact on the kernel length that you are using when we are doing the convolutional neural network training. So in this video, we are going to do the same one dimensional convolutional neural network, but in this case, we'll use three different kernel sizes in the same input data. So let's see how we are going to do that. So initially we have our raw data like this, then we are going to copy this raw data into three, three, uh, into three instances. 1, 2 and 3. For the first instance, we are going to use a kernel length of 50. For the second one, we are going to use a kernel length of 100. And for the third one, we are going to use a kernel length of 200. Then it is going to be very similar as compared to the last video we saw. Each, each and every uh, uh, instance or each and every copy of this uh, signal uh, window length file will go through convolutional neural network uh, individually and uh, they will go through convolutional layer max pooling layer and finally they will arrive at fully connected layer that means we will we'll flatten the all the will flatten all the neurons in there we'll do the same for this case as well and we'll do the same for this case this case as well finally when we have three sets of uh, flattened layer then we'll con concatenate them into a single larger uh, fully connected layer then we'll have our output layer output layer as in where we'll have our classification so this is what uh, we're going to do in this Jupyter notebook why is this important is where, when we are using a single kernel length the limitation was maybe we are able to miss out on larger uh, larger wave form in present in that particular signal but using three different type of uh, kernel lens help us to uh, cover more type of frequency ranges so that's it let's see in the jupyter notebook how we are actually going to implement this so here is the jupyter notebook just like the previous 1D cases, most of the things are going to be similar only. We'll see where we are, we are doing the difference, where, where there is a difference. First, importing the libraries, then importing the data frame. In the next case, I'm going to create the instances, uh, like we can segment the input data according to the window, window length. I'm taking window length to be 500 and strike 200. After that, this is the uh, input data I have total 13,000 instances each having a dimension of 500 cross on then I'm going to do a training and test split 30% I'm keeping as my test size then I'll import the tensorflow libraries and uh, one extra library that I'm in importing here is the concatenate from tensorflow.carious layers I'm importing concatenate okay so let's see what i am doing first i am um, creating the number of classes which is equal to number of unique variables present in my fault class that's it so this is my first uh, first case which is which is going to be this one this part so in first i am um, initializing the input tensor for the shape, shape is similar to the X shape I have. That's it. Then I am initializing my first convolutional 1D layer with 64 filters and I am using a kernel size of 200. And this will be connected to my first layer. Inputs one, inputs one. So I am also using a dropout because I am using so many convolutional neural network. There is a chance of overfitting. So dropout I am using as a regularization parameter here then max pulling and then I am flattening my layer this is my flat one flat one layer same I am going to do for uh, for the second head 
second head of this data that means uh, I'm the input is same but I'm changing the name it is input to com to drop to pool to and flat to. just all are same and but here I'm using a kernel size of 100 here it was 200 now I'm using a kernel size of 100 then in the third third uh, block I'm using a kernel size of 50 rest all are same just the name are different like I'm indexing this th third head once these three I already have in my case then I'm going to create a new layer which is merged and I'm going to concatenate this three flatten layer into a single larger flatten layer flat one flat one flat three. they are saved in my merged layer then I'm just going to add one more dense layer with the merged in front of the merged layer and finally my uh, dense uh, finally I'll create my output layer which will have my number of classes activation will be softmax then according to my model 1d cnn model i'll create the model where my input will be there will be three inputs three inputs as in i'll just copy suppose extreme is my input then i'll just copy extreme three times so this input one input two and input three will be the same but i just need to write them thrice and output will be outputs this output which, which, which will output my number of classes that's it I'll just uh, do the summary and uh, compile my model okay so this is how the model looks like these three are my input then there is several convolutional neural network layer dropout layer max pooling layer and flatten layer then finally all three are concatenated here then another dense layer and finally a classification layer all right we have total uh, nine uh, nine fifty thousand neurons to train on. Then I'm taking a bash bash size of ten and epochs to be ten, and I'm doing a fit, fitting here. See here it is very important. When we are doing the training, I'm just repeating x train thrice. This is the most important part here because we are taking three inputs, three inputs uh, here. So we need to repeat this thing three times. That's it. Nothing new is here. It's only this part. Then Y train is Y train, and also for validation data, I'm repeating X test thrice. Okay, that's it. We can see the results here. The validation accuracy we got up to 99%, and the training accuracy one, which is clearly overfit condition, but okay. You can see there is a little improvement on the uh, on the performance as well. So once I do the plotting, we can see here. That I'm getting a fairly good uh, confusion matrix here with the 99%, uh, 99%, 99%, 99 okay, uh, accuracy at some cases, but and rest everywhere 100% accuracy. Then I did a dimensionality reduction and TCM for that as well, and this is how the TCM looks like, which is fairly good. So this implementation was not about increasing the uh, to show how how to increase the efficiency further more more than 99%. But uh, the aim of this uh, implementation was to show or to give you another tool that you can use in your own case when you are doing fault diagnosis for different elements. You can try out this uh, case as well to see if this has any, if this shows any improve, performance improvement or not. So that was it. In the next video, we are going to see a very interesting case where we'll use this uh, input signal input raw input signal and convert it into a 2d grayscale image then using that grayscale image will train two dimensional neural network convolutional neural network and see the performances all right till then bye and take care